Predictions of the Prophet Jeremiah Contact 229 of July 31, 1989 Now I would like to ask you about Jeremiah's predictions and Jeremiah's data. Have you brought them with you? Everything is complete. The data and stories of the biblical traditions are truthfully based on legends, conscious lies and falsifications, as well as on a deceitfully made-up false and fantasized chronicle. This also applies to the dates of the ancient and true prophets Jeremiah, Josiah, Elia, and Enoch. The prophets' times of births were the following, Jeremiah at 1123a, Josiah at 1044a, Elia at 1102a, and Enoch at 1101a. Thank you. But what about Jeremiah's predictions, which in fact are not prophecies? I had to translate them into the German language of today's understanding, through which the predictions can now be listened to as follows. In the new time, when the prophet of the new time spreads his teaching, the time of the great developmental change has begun which will, starting in the second millennium, lead far into the third millennium after the birth. Thank you. But what about Jeremiah's predictions, which in fact are not prophecies? I had to translate them into the German language of today's understanding, through which the predictions can now be listened to as follows. In the new time, when the prophet of the new time spreads his teaching, the time of the great developmental change has begun, which will, starting in the second millennium, lead far into the third millennium after the birth of the prophet Emmanuel. And when the second millennium ends and the third millennium will have begun, human beings will be blinded by gold and all material values to such an extent that they will be counting tailors everywhere in all countries. And even if they look up to the sky, they will only see gold, gemstones, and tailors in the stars. They will build cult places to pay homage to an unsubstantial god, as well as to human beings who are raised up to saints by human beings. The cult places of the unsubstantial godhead will become sites for merchants and money changers. The lenders who lend all sorts of achievements and accommodations and many inventions for a fee will become avaricious usurers. And it will be that the judicial authorities will pronounce their right in unright and no longer punish the fallible ones for their evil deeds, but reward them by imposing penalties that are insignificant. Thus, the huge fire of unfairness will smolder and burn, and will also lend its hand to behaving in a sexually immoral and unseemly wise, so it will not fail to appear that every town will be a place of ausgartet sexually immoral and unseemly behavior. And also the children and their children will live a life of ausartung, and will become a fiery cloud that burns and destroys everything. They will raise the old blood-sopping flags and spread terror and leave uncountable deaths. The mightful ones of the world will abominably misuse their might and have innumerable innocent human beings put to death. They will transform the building blocks of life into death, bringing weapons in order to kill human beings in vast numbers and to destroy nature. With the appearance of the prophet of the new time, the irrationality of the human being will get out of control in such a wise through the procreation of offspring that the earth, the sky, the oceans, the forests, the prairies, and the deserts, as well as the mountains, will be populated to such an extent that no human being is able to make one step unnoticed, and therefore each one comes into conflict with the other. The human being will claim his or her might and command over nature and life, and therewith strive for the might of the creation, because he or she will in every respect tear down all boundaries and ignore them. But everything will not continue endlessly, because one day everything will turn and be directed against the human being. Like a drunken ruler, he or she will suddenly begin to sway and run in anxiety like a blind horse. He or she will ride himself or herself like a riding animal, spurring and whipping himself or herself into confusion, into a forest of the unreal, at which end it is dark, desolate, and deadly, and leads into a deep abyss without hope of rescue. 
It will be the time when gigantic buildings and towers rising up to the sky are being built in all lands and at all points of the earth. And the human being will live and work in these towers and buildings. There will also be gigantic cities in which the human being spends his or her life, as a result, fertile fields empty on which, however, buildings and towers will be built, because space for living will become less and less. And it will be that there is no truthly law anymore, rather only the one of the individual human being and that of individual groups. Thus, many turn into barbarians who will live in the cities terrorizing the righteous ones. There will be so many human beings in this new time that there will not be enough bread for all of them, and also no water, which will become increasingly scarce. But the human being will also become delusional and will fanatically run after many games, which will soon be not enough for him or her, which is why he or she will venture on other games through which life becomes the plaything of the delusion. These death-bringing games will be like a death-bringing fire if they are kindled, and if the human being carelessly risks his or her life for them only to satisfy his or her delusion through things that are meant to increase his or her excitement. When the prophet of the new time appears, and the third millennium after the prophet Emmanuel begins, very many human beings will be suffering from hunger and thirst. While some human beings lose their lives due to extremely high temperatures, many others will turn blue due to extreme cold and will be tormented by great waters. In general, the human being falls into fear of natural happenings, and many would wish to see another world. And many will fall into fear because the mightful ones of the world get very badly out of the control of the good human nature and maliciously wage wars in order to get hold of countries and mineral resources. They will be the hypocrites who are audacious enough to claim to act in the name and command of a god in order to strengthen their greed for might. During the time of the prophet of the new time, the human being will be falling victim to various god cults, through which he or she will completely lose his or her inner freedom. The cults will become large dealing groups, which will be established and led by self-appointed god equivalents. But truthfully, they are only dealers of lies, deception, and illusions who instill their dangerous poison of delusional guidance into the human being, where through he or she becomes a believer in the unreality and dependent on it. However, in the end, the poison is extremely dangerous because it destroys the thoughts and feelings, where through the human being becomes indifferent and cold in his or her feelings, thus towards himself or herself, as well as towards the next ones. And those who mix this poison with their thoughts and feelings to the point of fanaticism will be like wild beasts. They will threaten their fellow human beings, kill and use physical and psychical gavalt, and will rob, blackmail, and torture them. Therefore, this kind of human being will get very badly out of the control of the good human nature to such an extent that the life for all other human beings will turn into a daily recurring dread. When the prophet of the new time is in his activity, the human being in general will be directed to gain as much pleasure for himself or herself as will be possible for him or her. This pleasure is also related to man and woman who both will get very badly out of the control of the good human nature and mutually outdo themselves that the husband so often repudiates his wife and gets remarried as is possible for him. And he will show himself amenable to the same gender and different gender whoring and therethrough will bring deadly rampantly spreading diseases over the world and among the whole humankind. The woman will be just as unbridled as the man, because she will wantonly walk through the alleys of cities and take any man currently coming along. Yet, not only will whoring be immeasurably great, but rather also the irrationality and the unknowledge, which will also spread over to children. Thus, not only adult women will give birth to children without knowing or naming the father, but also children will give birth to children. Thus, there will be no father or master for the respective child who can teach, instruct, 
educate and guide him or her. All decency and respect, all feeling of honor and all tradition, as well as every custom and honor will get lost. The human being becomes estranged from his or her next one, and despite the great mass of humankind, he or she will be alone amongst it. The laws of regulation and of honor will be forgotten as though never having existed. So therefore, the age-old announcement will be forgotten that the human being can turn into a savage again, should he or she forget all the human and life-based values. And with the coming of the prophet of the new time, behaving in a sexually immoral and unseemly wise will grow out of control to such an extent that the father sexually immorally and unseemly and incestuously misuses his daughter and the mother her son. The behaving in a sexually immoral and unseemly wise between man and man and between woman and woman will characterlessly become rampant, and also that the old and the young will misuse and use physical and psychical gay vault against the child. And all this will happen in front of every human being's eyes, against which, however, the legal authorities will hardly undertake anything, rather only impose insufficient smallest penalties. Thus the blood of families will become unclean through incest, because the evil will spread from bed to bed. And many illnesses and rampantly spreading diseases will spread through behaving in a sexually immoral and unseemly wise, and in doing so, the human bodies will absorb all the earth's rot, the faces will look tormented, and the limbs will be emaciated. It will not be spoken of true love any longer, rather only of carnal and sexual love, where through the word, love will become the greatest threat for all those human beings who can perceive cognition regarding their self only via the flesh body. When the prophet of the new time speaks of the codex as well as the oath and law, only a few like-minded companions will gather around him, but most of the human beings will not want to hear him. At first there will only be a few who will hurry after the truth when he spreads the teaching of the Spirit, because for a great many his voice and teaching will go unheard as if in a desert. But contrary to this, the murky and mightful waters of the great world encompassing wrong, delusional and fanatic god cults will spread, and wrong so-called emissaries of God, godly ones, sublime ones, masters, redeemers, liberators, and kings of salvation, will do their pernicious work with lies and deception. Work with guile, fanaticism, greed for gold and charlatanism, and will gather around themselves innumerable thoughtless believers. And many amongst the misled fanatical believers will carry weapons as never before, and with these they will kill and murder in multiple numbers, while others, as individuals, or in small or larger groups, will be seeking suicide in their belief delusion. Amongst all of these, the word of the prophet of the new time will go unheard as if in a desert, when he speaks of law, of the teaching of the truth and the spirit, and of true love, of peace, freedom, harmony, and fairness. His words will be burning and sharp, and he will be teaching that the fallible ones will bring punishment upon themselves through themselves on their irrational campaigns. When the prophet of the new time comes, and the human beings from the stars honor him, a roaring of death will rise over the world, and deadly weapons will crash in all countries. Fanatical terror insane ones who will gather in large groups will be pursued by legions of soldiers. Anxiety and horror will rule, and the mightful ones of the countries will make the terror their own and become despots and tyrants. They will all be barbaric, unfaithful, full of a revengeful mentality, evil and wild, while the deniers of the truth will perform mischief in their cults' houses in the cities, and the mightful ones of the cults in the heart of the large city in the land of the boot will have the audacity to let themselves be worshipped as God representatives and as holy. These truthless ones of all God cults will have great might over their believers, will exploit them, and endlessly lead them into the unreal. 
and through these cults the time will come when no regulations and no rules will exist, and hatred and cult fanaticism will spread like a blazing fire over the world. The terror insane ones and the legions of soldiers will massacre innumerable innocent human beings, and the cult believers will persecute and strangle the truth searchers. The hatred and the delusional god belief, pathological craving for revenge, cruelty, mercilessness, and destructive rage will be of each one and of all. The world will resound from an immense, great, and merciless war cry, and cities will be destroyed and the blood of the human beings will flow in streams. And the reward for the prophet of the new time for his disclosure of the truth will be that he, as all prophets at all times, will be misconceived, slandered, denied, threatened by deceitful attacks against his life, and he will be accused and hindered in spreading his word of the truth by evil machinations and be vilified. Also his words of the truth and his teaching will be stolen by many malicious ones, liars and deceivers and falsified to their own favor, as never will have happened to a prophet before. The dishonorable ones will belittle his honor and make use of it themselves, and unrightfully gain a big profit thereof. When the prophet of the new time begins to be active, the human beings will no longer search for the truth, and no longer decide according to the truth, because through the laws and the belief of the god cults, they will only decide according to their own blood and their own belief. The human beings will no longer listen to the complaints of old people and no longer to the crying of the suffering children. Old people, women and children will be treated with contempt. The old ones will be hidden away in old age homes, and women and children will be sexually, immorally, and unseemly misused and driven to whoring, and no one will be there to protect them, neither from slave drivers and pimps, nor from the legions of soldiers, nor from the terror fanatics who will come at them. Hatred and pathological craving for revenge will flood the earth, whose human beings will live in an irrational belief of a doubtful peace, which they hope in vain to attain, because a worldwide war will inundate the earth and no one will be spared. Not the old, not the children, and not the women, not the sick and the injured, and not the fair and the peaceable ones. Legions of soldiers and terror fanatics will destroy the houses and go murdering, pillaging, and plundering through countries and cities, and will kill and destroy everything getting in their way. When one of them has left, the next one will follow and wreak even more terribleness. And the eyes of human beings will be kept shut in order to avoid seeing the children and women who will have been misused and treated with physical and psychical gavalt. The prophet of the new time will know what has happened, happens and will happen on all ends of the earth. He will show that men, women, and children in many countries are starving to death, that their bones break through their skin, and that inflamed eyes and open ulcers mark their bodies, offering a feast to masses of flies and other poisonous vermin. He will also show that human beings are hunted like mangy dogs and rats, tortured and beaten to death, dismembered or put to death in some other way. However, only a few will listen to him, because the majority of human beings do not want to see all the atrocities, and so they will turn their faces away and set the words of the prophet at naught. Yet he will be undeterred and will mightfully raise his word of the truth and carry it into the world. But only a few human beings will hear his voice in its full scope and direct their thoughts and feelings according to his words. Because at the time of the prophet of the new time, the human being will be extremely hostile toward his or her fellow human beings and life itself to such an extent that he or she will care only about himself or herself. As alms, he or she will give his or her next one only a tiny part of a split tailor, while he or she sleeps on bags filled with gold and tailors. However, even the tiny part of the split tailor which he or she gives with the one hand, he or she will take back with the other hand manifold, because he or she will not give away anything for nothing. If his or her sense is not directed for profit when giving, 
then it will still be for assuaging his or her guilty conscience. So in the new time the human being will make a business of everything, thus nothing will be given away without compensation. Each thing, even the tiniest, will have its price, even the grass growing on the ground, the animal, the water, and even the human being himself slash herself, who will be judged according to his or her productivity. The exchange of goods will be abolished, and truly nothing will be given away anymore, because each and everything will be integrated into business and sold. The human being, however, will lose his or her individual value, namely, the value of being a human being. As a result, his or her value will be only that of his or her goods and chattels, and that of his or her body's weight of his or her flesh and bones. Everything that makes him or her to be a human being will be taken from him or her, because nothing of him or her will remain inviolate any longer, neither his or her life, nor his or her thoughts and feelings, nor his or her body and blood. When the human being dies, not only will his or her material belongings become the object of dispute, but also his or her mortal shell, his or her blood and viscera, because everything will have its price in this field in the new time as well. Thus, human beings will be slaughtered like animals and torn up and defiled like rotting carcass for the sake of their blood and viscera. The prophet of the new time will mourn because the human being has altered and destroyed the face of the earth and will be approaching total elimination. But he will also point out with hard words of truth that the human being is neither the master nor the feudal lord of the earth, nor of its mountains, brooks, rivers, lakes, oceans, meadows, fields, wetlands, and forests. And he will teach that, for the purpose of profit, the human being dangerously plows through the earth and sky with powerful machines, practicing usury, and also cuts furrows with big ships in rivers, lakes, and oceans in order to wage wars worldwide and to transport large masses of human beings to other countries and to wipe out all aquatic creatures for the purpose of procuring food. Thus, also illnesses and rampantly spreading diseases will disseminate throughout the entire world, carried by innumerable travelers who will be spreading themselves out into all countries. Likewise, by means of foodstuffs and goods of trade from all over the world, various animals and other creatures and plants will be spread and transported into other countries. Consequently, they will take root in foreign countries and will disturb and negatively influence the course of nature. Yet, a far worse time is still to come, because through the human being's guilt, large parts of the earth will become barren and infertile. The huge forests will fall victim to the human being's greed for gold and money, and the air will burn, because the air will be destroyed through the human being's production of artificial materials. The waters will turn brackish and poisonous, as well as foul-smelling, and will become scarce for drinking. The human being will boundlessly, unconsideredly, and conscienselessly exploit the earth's treasures and exhaust the earth's wealth down to the last bushel. The entire world will be polluted through various kinds of dirt, which causes all life to wilt. And the human being's hatred will grow beyond all bounds, and also in his or her own family it will not be any different. Gradually, the human being will come to be like a lonesome and wild animal that is after the blood of its victim. With the appearance of the new prophet, 1937 years after the birth of the prophet Emmanuel, the time will begin when children will be sold for prostitution and abused. So many who have got very badly out of the control of the good human nature will find pleasure in their young skin. Many children will be driven into whoring or will be strangled after being misused in a sexually immoral and unseemly wise or killed by poison or weapons. But there will also be very many homeless children who are living on the streets, where they fall into the hands of dealers who kill and gut them like animals for the sake of their viscera. Other children will become targets of murderous henchmen of the authorities, 
and others will be treated like submissive animals and other creatures. The human being will become brutish and use gavalt, and in his or her unconcernedness towards the weak, he or she will also forget the untouchableness and weakness of children, and will exploit them through work and defile them by misusing them in a sexually immoral and unseemly wise. The secret of the children's blamelessness will be broken open and destroyed. Thus they will be trained like little dogs, and for various reasons of pathological craving for profit, led onto the sacrificial site like lambs, where they will be slaughtered and bled to death. The human being will no longer know mercy and fairness, but see only his or her own profit and advantage, and only live along in cruelty. The human being will be a prisoner of his or her own point of view, his or her own thoughts and feelings, and he or she will be inebriated by his or her own speech and not realize that he or she is more and more approaching the unreal and depravity. He or she will regard the lies, pictures, and reflections of the god cults and those of their rulers and servants as the truth of the world, because he or she will be like a patient and dumb sheep that can be led around as desired. However, the consequences will not fail to appear, because fanatical ones of other cults bringing terribleness will herd together the ones as the others like predatory animals and birds in order to push them more easily into the abyss and to their death. And it will be that one human being will be set against the other in order to rob and skin him or her for the only reason to get hold of his or her personal belongings. If, however, he or she survives, then he or she will be robbed of his or her thoughts and feelings, as well as of freedom and peace, and often even of his or her rationality. When the time of the new prophet comes, kings, emperors, and all the other rulers and the mightful ones of the god cults will have no real knowledge about the creation and its laws. They will rule in an evil and bloodthirsty wise, and with lying and deception, and command all the innocent, inactive, and unknowing masses of human beings. Lying and deception will be their handiwork, and when they are in front of their believers, they will conceal their true faces behind masks and keep their true intentions a secret. But the time will come when they will be overthrown. However, it will be that they decide on the human being's destiny and on all and everything, and the common human being will be excluded from the inner assemblies of their own rules and regulations. Thus, it is no longer the human being who will make decisions as a group, but only the higher ones who, at the top, will rule their regiment and let themselves be paid horrendously for their infamous actions. Although the individual human being believes to enjoy freedom, he or she will no longer be free but will live in bondage to the rulers and the higher ones. Only those from wild areas will rise up against it who have neither fallen prey to a god belief nor to a subservience to authority. But at first they will be cursed and damned and accused of delusion, and some will be conquered and burned alive or killed in some other way. When the prophet of the new time has come, then the human beings on earth will become as numerous as ants in an anthill. And if a stick is driven into the colony, then they will run around and trample each other to death and crush each other like annoying vermin. The human beings will buzz around like confused insects, and large groups of them will rush from one location to the other, either fond of traveling or fleeing from war, death, and terror. The human races will intermix among each other in an unbridled wise and breed human beings of mixed blood, thus many illnesses, rampantly spreading diseases and all kinds of human evil, vices and maliciousness will spread over the whole world. Some god cults will lure the believers of the others or mix among each other. God cults and their higher ones, as well as their rulers and believers, will preach and promise freedom, love, and peace. Yet everywhere their talk will be lies and falsehood, because in their hearts they are only out for hatred and revenge, retaliation, robbery, and pillage. 
The god cults themselves and their believers will become enemies and wage war against each other. Human beings will go beyond all boundaries, and the young will have gray hair just like the old. The human being will abandon the way of nature, and families will be torn asunder. They will scatter all over the world, and nothing will be able to unite them anymore. The new time will be a completely different world, and the human being will be a V-sin without stability and security. Without real guidance, the human being will go off in all directions, and suggestively and forcefully will bring about misfortune upon misfortune upon himself or herself. And he or she will no longer have stability, and will constantly be standing at the edge of an abyss in which he or she is in danger of falling into. At the time of the new prophet in the second millennium after the birth of Emmanuel, until far into the third millennium, the human being will no longer live according to the laws of the creation, rather will subjugate himself or herself to unreal laws, and even far more unreal gods and their cults. As if riding a horse, the human being will try to guide his or her life and will want to determine the children's gender in the women's womb. Likewise, he or she will kill all the children in the woman's womb that he or she does not want. The human being will consider himself or herself to be the creation itself, and especially the rulers as well as many mighty ones will demand eternal life. They will be the ones who seize all the positions in high offices and the best land, as well as all the most beautiful women and men, in order to misuse them sexually, immorally, and unseemly as objects of lust. The poor, the old, and the weak will be treated like bad livestock, and their poor huts and buildings for the old and the sick will be like evil-smelling prisons for them, where they will be in semi-consciousness and putrefy. And it will be that abysmal anxiety will, like poison, eat into their, as well as every other human being's thoughts and feelings, into the heart and into the head. All of this will also be based in a craving for usury, profit and might, because this will be an obscure and secret regulation whose law will be hatred and revenge, and its weapon will be the poison, through which comes the craving for gold and money, for belongings and possessions, for lust and vice, as well as for pleasure. This poison will spread itself as a rule over the whole earth, and its servants and henchmen will be connected to each other by a poisonous blood kiss that forges them together. The poor and the old, the righteous and the weak will be at their mercy and obey them, and therefore, unwantedly or simple-mindedly, they have to be subserviently submissive to the rulers and the mightful ones of the lands and the god cults. The only laws will be those dictated in their shadow realms by the rulers, kings and emperors, and other mightful ones, as well as by the highest and higher ones of the god cults. Thus, this poison will reach up to every single human being, and will poison him or her, and force him or her into a delusional belief in God. And this poison of the god cults will be manifold and spread all over the world to such an extent that the human being will soak up the poison under his or her souls when walking over the earth. When the new time prophet begins with his activity, then it will be the time when many human beings will watch all the happenings in the world, doing nothing and without feelings. Many will sit there with crossed arms and will walk around with empty eyes and deaf ears without knowing what is going on around them and what they see and hear. They will have no more wise ones where they can educate themselves in knowledge and in wisdom. Thus they will be like a smith without a smithy where they could forge their iron. And they will be like field workers who no longer have a field to till. Human beings will be like a seed, unable to find fertile soil to take root and sprout. They will become hopeless and humiliated, and deprived of honor and rights they will haphazardly wander about. The youngest and the oldest will be without home, and eke out their lives in misery and hardship on the street. And for many of them to reach their salvation, the only way will be to exert terror, and to rob the next one of his or her belongings, to delude and to deceive, or to go to war. 
And because of all their misery and hardship, they will hate their lives and maliciously fight against themselves. This will also be the time when the human being is threatened and befallen by terrible things that develop from animal illnesses and from the human being's malicious experiments, but also from the illnesses of the water and the earth. But the human beings will also rush up with strange vehicles into space and will bring back deadly illnesses to the earth. And through war and terror, as well as through pathological craving for might and irrationality, the human being will destroy a great many things on the earth. However, he or she will let everything rise again and will want to preserve everything that has escaped destruction. But it will be that the anxiety seethes in the human being of the days that lie ahead because they promise awful things. But it will be too late for anxiety because enormous destruction will rule and the earth will be covered near and far with desert. And there will also be gigantic waters that become deeper and deeper, and at certain times and days, the water will flow thus immensely that, like a deluge, it will sweep away everything, destroy and eliminate everything, and will claim the lives of innumerable human beings. Through the human being's destructive rage, the air and sun will become poisonous and dangerous, where through the bodies of the weak will be devoured. When the prophet of the new time is born, a worldwide war will cause the earth to tremble and will claim so many human lives as never in a happening before. And from henceforth, wild waters will increasingly rise, volcanoes will wreak enormous devastation, and earthquakes will shake many lands and let large cities go down. The weathers will assume apocalyptical proportions, and the dying of human beings at these happenings will be immense. Therefore, everything that was not built under the guidance of the wise ones or fitted with safety measures will be threatened and destroyed. Mountains will come crashing down, and mudslides on mountain slopes and in valleys will bury villages, human beings and animals, and all goods and chattels of the human beings, while at other places the ground breaks asunder, coming out of the depths of the earth. But the human being will not turn himself or herself to wisdom, and will deny that the blame for very many of these happenings will relate back to him or her. Therefore, he or she will continue to rule in irrationality, because he or she will be stubborn and obsessed with pride. The human being does neither listen to the warnings shouted at him or her by the prophet, nor to the warnings shouted at him or her by the earth. Thus the terrible things will not come to an end for a long time. As a result, conflagrations and shakes out of the depths of the earth will destroy cities and villages. And it will be just like during a war, when in spite of the legions of soldiers, the poor and the barbarians will plunder all the belongings and treasures left abandoned by human beings. The eyes of the soldiers will be blind to the plundering, because they will be up to mischief as plunderers themselves. When the prophet of the new time is born, artificial substances invented by human beings will reach the air and destroy its upper layers. Therefore, the sun will burn the earth and afflict the human beings with the black corrosion cancer, causing many to die. The air will no longer be able to protect the earth and its life from the sun's heat and fire, because the air will only be a curtain full of holes. Thus, the burning light of the sun will burn the human being's skin and eyes and let him or her go blind or die. Lakes and oceans will foam up like boiling water, and rivers will dry up, and cities will be buried. Cities, villages, meadows, and forests will fall victim to the human being's delusion when he or she artificially dams up huge rivers and lakes in order to gain powers. And not will he or she consider that by doing so, he or she torments and tortures the earth, which will defend itself with earthquakes, wild waters, with raging volcanoes, and with unweather and all kinds of other things. Entire landscapes and countries as well as islands and even entire continents will disappear. But human beings will have only a short memory, 
so they will only flee to higher grounds and will start to rebuild everything again. Very quickly, they will forget what happened and will continue in the same old rut. The human beings will let themselves be blinded by deceptive pictures, which they awaken to life, and through which they let their senses be fooled, so they believe to touch something that does not even exist. Thus, they will pursue ways that only the eyes can see, however not the intellect and not the rationality. And this way will be a dream that will thus become a reality. So, the time will come that human beings will no longer be able to distinguish between what exists and what does not. Many false labyrinths will open up to them, in which they go astray and get lost. Many god cults and subgroups of the god cults will arise, and they will lead the believers into the unreal and exploit them. And those who are able to concoct and awaken all these deceptive pictures for the human beings will lie to and cheat those with low intelligence and the gullible ones, and play an evil game of delusion with them. And indeed, there will be many human beings who fall prey to the deceptive pictures of the god cults and their higher ones, and become dependent on them, and consequently, they will be like subservient dogs. When the time of the new prophet has arrived, the human beings become ever greater and immeasurable in their number, and they will no longer beget descendants in the natural way, rather will intervene in the woman's procreation power and childbearing power. And thus the human being will create new human beings out of minute parts of a human being, and he or she will do the same with animals. Human beings and animals will cry for special food and meat in large quantities. Species of the same kind will eat their kind when the human being transforms the flesh and bones of human beings and animals into fine forms for the production of feed. And as there through the animals will eat their own kind, the human being will consume his or her own parents and siblings when eating the meat of animals. Animals will no longer be under the protection and care of human beings, because they will only be bred in large numbers under unworthy living conditions, in order to finally be miserably slaughtered. The human being will alter the animals according to his or her will, and also create hybrids from them, impose unending torment on them, and not care about their never-ending suffering. The human being will impinge on the animal's nature and form them to his or her liking. The human being will change the laws of life, and therewith also himself or herself. The human being, who out of himself slash herself, built up his or her origin to a life form of progress, will no longer be the image of himself or herself, but a creation of horror. And horror will also be a reality for the human being's children, because anxiety, poison, and hopelessness will lie in wait for them, because the human being will want child 37 dream only for himself or herself and as his or her personal property, however no longer for the sake of life and the children. Many children will become only a commodity, and their bodies will be sold for work, sexually immoral and unseemly behavior and self-enjoyment. Others will be set upon, tortured, beaten and killed by their own parents and siblings, or by child abusers who have got very badly out of the control of the good human nature. But even those children who are protected by their relatives will be threatened. And they will be poor in thoughts and feelings, and will be without knowledge, because they will live in false games and deceptive pictures that will seduce them, because no master stands at their side who could instruct them in knowledge and wisdom. Thus, nobody will teach the children to hope and to act and to turn towards the knowledge of the real truth. Therefore, the human being will be presumptuous and consider himself or herself to be the creation, although he or she will never be any more than what he or she was at birth, namely a human being. And the human being is in dire need of learning, which is why he or she must learn a lot in order to free himself or herself of his or her unknowledge and unwisdom. The human being, however, will not be willing to learn, and will turn a deaf ear to the teaching of the prophet of the new time, 
Thus his words will echo unheard as if in a desert. Thus, the human being will remain in the old, in the same old rut as before, and only a few will follow the words of the prophet. Therefore, the human being will continue to think himself or herself as creation, and will ever more strike out and let himself or herself be overwhelmed by anger and rage, pathological craving for revenge and hatred, by greed for might, unfairness, pathological craving for profit and jealousy. But through the might that he or she will have seized over animals, over nature, the human being and life, he or she will feel strong and will continue to let his or her arms strike out and destroy everything around himself or herself like a wild barbarian. Thus the human being will remain a small dwarf in his or her thoughts and feelings, as well as in his or her intellect and rationality, although in many things of progress he or she will possess the strength of a giant. Thus, in this wise he or she will advance with the footsteps of a giant, however not know which way he or she should take in the days to come, because he or she will be lacking all the necessary knowledge and wisdom. In fact, his or her head will be very heavy from the great amount of knowledge that he or she has acquired, yet it will be a knowledge of uselessness, because this knowledge is only directed towards values that are not of the spirit and are not equal with the laws of the creation, but are based only on human laws. Thus, in spite of all his or her knowledge, the human being will be poor in true knowledge, because he or she will not know why he or she lives and dies. Thus he or she will remain to be the impetuous one as he or she has always been, the one who wildly and foolishly waves his or her arms about and utters irrational words, or softly whimpers like a child not yet able to speak. Already in the second millennium following the birth of Emmanuel, and still before the birth of the prophet of the new time, a worldwide war will be rolling across the earth, and also it will be so two years after his birth. But that will not be the end, because since time immemorial, there will be new larger and smaller wars everywhere, and this will continue to be the case until far into the third millennium. In all the four winds corners of the earth, Entire countries will become war booty for the might-greedy ones who have got very badly out of the control of the good human nature, and thereby innumerable human beings will be delivered to death, as they will also be through the god cult, which will delusionally and falsely proceed from the teaching of the prophet Emmanuel, because the teaching will fall victim to an unimaginable falsification. In their own countries, human beings will wage war against each other and cut each other's throats, and there will be wars between countries and believers of the god cults. The Hebrions will become Jews, and therefrom twelve tribes will branch off and will become believers in Allah. From Emmanuel's teaching, a Christian cult will emerge, and they, as well as the Jews and the believers in Allah, will not stop fighting each other until far into the third millennium after Emmanuel's birth. The earth will become a bloody battlefield all around, and one of the reasons for this will be that each god cult is supposed to be the right and better one than the other. Thus, the believers of all god cults will consider themselves to be in the sole pureness and in the only true belief, and will want to defend their irrational belief. Thus, the believers of one god cult will be confronting the believers of the other god cults with might and doubt, with hatred and revenge, as well as with suspicion, guile, and with the intention to murder, where through it will be unavoidable that death will continue everywhere. And through all these terrible things, also very many human beings will be excluded from human rights and life, because all rights will be taken from them, and they will not be given neither bread nor shelter. They will be the poorest among the poor, and will have to go around naked, and they will have only their own body for sale. They will be ostracized ones and outcasts, far away from all those who live in joyfulness, delightfulness, and abundance. Those, however, who live in this wise of abundance will, in their guilt, grumblingly threaten the poorest, take their land, 
and unrestrainedly reproduce themselves. They will certainly hear the hard and fair words of the prophet of the new time, however they will be indifferent and have no fear of retaliation. But their haughtiness will one day break down when the masses of the people become barbarians and seize everything by storming, destroying, and plundering the palaces of the rich, the rulers, higher and highest ones, as well as of the mightful ones and of the cult rulers. When the activity of the prophet of the new time begins, the human being will already have entered an impenetrable labyrinth of anxiety, destruction, and osartung. His or her anguish will close his or her eyes and shut his or her ears. Thus he or she will no longer be able to see and hear what is happening around him or her. His or her reflecting and striving will be full of suspicion, and anxiety and fright will accompany each of his or her steps. However, he or she will not be granted any rest because he or she is constantly driven forward. The voice of the prophet of the new time will be very loud, hard, and fair that it must be heard by everyone. And it will also be heard by those who shut their ears and pretend to be deaf. And many will very well hear the voice, however deny it, because they will want to continue in the same style and to possess more and more. But they will lose their heads to the deceptive pictures of the god cults and to those who want to be their master through lies and falsehood. Thus the human being will be deceived by those who call themselves their herdsmen and herdswomen, yet there will only be bad herdsmen and herdswomen. When the millennium in which the new time prophet will have deceased comes to an end, and when eight hundred years will have passed after his death, human beings will finally have come so far in opening their eyes and ears that they will be capable of seeing and hearing. But this will be because, over the centuries, the might of the prophet's word has started being active and penetrating the thoughts and feelings, as well as the rationality of the human beings. It will be a very arduous work that the prophet and his like-minded companions will have to fulfill. Nevertheless, their efforts will not fail to be successful. Thus, slowly, the human beings will free themselves from the god cults and turn to the truth of the spirit and the creation. They will no longer be chained with their heads in the irrational teachings of god cults, and they will have their eyes and ears open, so they will be able to see and hear from one end of the earth to the other, and will be able to understand each other henceforth. They will have become knowing that each blow that strikes the next one will hurt and harm him or her. The human beings will form a large community in which each one is a part of the other. True love will create peace and freedom and will unify the humankind. And there will also be one special language beside the many that exist, which will be understood and spoken by all human beings. And this will finally be the start of the birth of the new, the truthly being human. And when the end of the millennium comes, the human being will have conquered the space and will fly to the stars. He or she will also create stars himself or herself in the great dark expanses of the space in which the stars are twinkling. He or she will fly through the air and through space with shining large metal ships and will set out for long and far journeys to search for a new home somewhere out in the vastness of the space. But the human being will also be the master of the waters and will build large cities upon the oceans and then feed himself or herself from the fruits of the oceans. And this will be the time when nothing will be prohibited for him or her anymore, because he or she lives according to the laws of the creation. The new time will bring with it that human beings will be able to communicate with each other without having to use the language of the mouth or the help of megaphones, because with their thoughts and feelings and through their heads, they will be able to receive and understand all messages which another human being thinks and feels. And it will be that the human beings share their dreams with each other and live long lives. The age of the human beings will be as high as the old handed down texts spoke about the oldest ones, who reached an age of 1,000 years. 
and it will be the time when human beings know the secret of all things. Thus the body of the human being and the animals, the secret of gemstones and waters, and the look in any other human being's eyes. The human being will penetrate and recognize all secrets, and consequently will be able to push open one door after the other into the area of the new life. The human being will be a powerful, creative, and bubbling source of the new life, and all human beings will learn the knowledge about the creation. Full of honor and dignity, the children of the earth will look up into the space and will fathom its secrets better than anybody before them. The human being's body will be stronger, taller, and more agile, and his or her thoughts and feelings as well as his or her head will embrace all things and understand and integrate them. But all of this will already be in the offing during the lifetime of the prophet of the new time, because his activity will contribute greatly thereto, although it will be denied by unviers and those who want to know it better. And he will also do much so that the man will no longer be the sole master, because he will already be active at an early age that the woman will come in order to take hold of the scepter and change the world for the better. Thus, the woman will be the wife equal sign heron of the future times, for she is powerful and mightful, and she will impose her will upon men and will create a better and more harmonious world in peace and freedom. In the third millennium after Emmanuel's birth, the woman will rise to become the mother of the millennium. The woman will exude the gentleness and love, the harmony and the peace of the true mother, and she will be the relatively complete beauty and love after the ugliness of barbarity and the death-bringing wars. And the teaching of the prophet will contribute much thereto, where through the new time in its going will be changed into a light time, in which there will honestly and truly be loved and shared, dreamt together, and dreams made to come true. And when this second birth comes true for the human being, then their thoughts and feelings and the head will appropriate the majority of those human beings who are one with each other in love for the next one. That will be the end of barbarity, the end of wars, and the end of evil. A time of knowledge and wisdom will dawn and bring near to the human beings the true sense of life, which the prophet of the new time will undeterredly teach and carry into the world, despite the deceitful attacks on his life. From the new time onwards, happy days will begin for the human beings through his teaching when the human beings find the way of peace, of freedom, and of the teaching of the Spirit, and walk on it. Then the earth will again have its regulation. At the beginning, only a few brave ones will follow the words and the teaching of the prophet, and their way will be very hard and arduous. So at first, only a few like-minded companions will set themselves apart and acquire their reward. However, the time will come when they quickly multiply and will be in very large masses around the world. Already at the time of the new prophet, many ways will lead from one city to another and from one end of the world to the other, and soon it will then be that the ways lead through the space and will be endless. The withered green of meadows and forests will recover again, waters will be clean and pure again, and water will be brought into the deserts, wherein everything will then sprout and bloom. And soon the earth will be like a new garden, where the human being will respect everything that grows and blooms, and that moves and crawls and flies. The human being will diligently scrub and keep clean everything that he or she has dirtied and with love and joy he or she will regard the earth as his or her new home. Love, harmony, knowledge, and wisdom will become his or her own duty, and in knowledge and wisdom he or she will think of his or her life and of his or her following lives, as well as of each day and each morning. Each human being will be like a steady pace among many others, and he or she will know more about his or her body and head and about his or her thoughts and feelings, as well as about the laws of life and of the creation, than was the case ever before. And there will also come the time when malady and illnesses will be recognized and healed before they can appear. 
and the human being will learn that he or she can prevent a lot of the malady and illnesses on himself or herself, and can also heal many of his or her own malady and illnesses. He or she will also learn that he or she has to stand by and help the poor and the weak. This, however, not only out of necessity but for the sake of love for the next one, and in order to uphold the entire being human in the real and true sense. Thus, the human being will also open his or her heart and purse for the poor and those who have nothing of their own and leave behind the regrettable times of barbarity, stinginess, and closedness. And when the new time is dawning, the human being will finally understand himself or herself in the right wise as the guardian of human regulation, as the true guardian of life, of the earth and its nature, including all living things thereon. Indeed, at that far-off time, the human being will have learnt to give and share, and to desist from taking for the purpose of satisfying his or her pathological craving for profit. The human being will finally be a true human being and will no longer be alone among the many. His or her loneliness will be gone and over, and he or she will finally become knowing in the real truth and the laws of the creation and life and of dying and of death. All human beings will acknowledge each other and will no longer make a difference between various races, god cults, and between the status of rich and poor. But all this will only happen after the worldwide wars and firestorms, the evil atrocities of human beings, and after all the apocalyptic catastrophes triggered through nature and the earth. Then new buildings and towers will grow out of the charred ruins of the cities and villages. However, an iron fist strong hand will be necessary to bring regulations into the chaos created by the human being. And it will be of utmost necessity that the prophet of the new time raises his mightful word and brings the teaching of the truth and the teaching of the spirit, because this will be the might that enables the human being to find the right way again. And through the new prophet's teaching, the human being will become knowing that not only he or she, but all life forms are bearers of the spirit and the light, and are created creations that must be respected. And when the human being knows that, then he or she will establish new cities on earth, upon the waters, under the waters, and in space, where he or she will travel to with silvery metallic ships. Thus, the human being will also remember what once was, and he or she will also know how to fathom what will be in the days and times to come. He or she will learn to understand procreation and birth, as well as life, dying and death, and will lose all anxiety and fear of it, because he or she will turn toward the teaching of the prophet. And the human being's age will be that of several lives, because his or her lifespan will be extended, and he or she will become knowing that the light never extinguishes, and that life also continues in death and in the new life, because his or her knowledge will become an all-embracing wisdom. These, my friend, are the predictions of Jeremiah for the second millennium that comes to an end, and the coming third millennium. Contact 230 of October 11th, 1989. Can you tell me today again something about the prophecies or predictions of the old prophets? Certainly. I have made an effort to still be able to bring something along with me. However, it is again not a prophecy, but a prediction that also this time leads back to the prophet Jeremiah and refers mainly to you. To make it understandable, I had also to translate his old words into the German language of today. So listen then what he had to say. As proclaimer of this world, I see and hear and know what will happen in very far days. It will be in centuries, when the proclaimer of the new time will raise his word, and teach the world, and cause great turmoil therewith and thus his life will be threatened. I see and hear and know, because my eyes and ears are open, and see and hear in space what will be happening in the far days to come. As with a great stride, I cover with my eyes and ears the days up to the far-off time, up to a free country, 
and to a place of which you don't know anything yet and which you cannot see yet. There will be the most fortitudinous of all fortitudinous ones, the most holy of all holy ones, and he will teach with might and proclaim the laws and recommendations of the creation. Like myself, he will be well versed in writing and will be able to listen to the space, and he will be the eye, the ear, and the conscience of the human beings, and he will let the human beings see the powers of the creation and let them hear its laws. He will be a recognizing and knowing one, and a mediator whose hand writes down the voices of those who will come from the stars. And he will be the third one to follow me, and he will be a follower in the new life as new personality of those proclaimers who were before me. His word will reveal the hidden building up of the world, and many a secret of the creation. And he will fill the gaps of memory that lead from one point in the past, or of the present, into the future. Thus he will show the map on which the happenings caused through the human being mark the new time. The new proclaimer will have to endure much affliction. His father will be a simple shoemaker, and his mother a simple woman who will altogether give birth to three sons and four daughters. One of the sons will be called Guardian of the Treasure, and he will be the new proclaimer. The knowledge about the laws of the creation will lay open to him as never before to a proclaimer. And he will be the one who brings to light again the true teaching and the true words of the old proclaimers, and will make them accessible to the human beings. Until then, the texts of my proclamations of the Teach 44 ing and of my words, and my words of my followers, and my words of my predecessor personalities, will wait in concealment for the right moment when they shall appear again in the days of the new proclaimer, brought by the human beings from space. And the proclaimer will await the right day, on the mountain of the horseshoe, where he will have his dwelling, and where the flag will flutter in the wind as a sign of the bond with human beings from space. And when the day is ripe, he will proclaim the old words, and his dwelling will be a place where human beings will turn up from the four winds of the earth. His real relatives will be from space, and they will come and go, yet cannot be seen by the human beings, because they will remain in concealment and have a head thinking, with which they cannot get along with the head thinking of the human beings of the earth. The new proclaimer of the farther days will be the founder of the group of the truth, which will spread to the four winds of the earth. He will break open the seal of many secrets of the creation, and of the head of the human beings, and of their thoughts and feelings, and he will be more knowing therein than any other human being of that time, or any time before. His number will be the one, the three, and the seven, and thus the number of the knowing and the wise. He will travel far, as far as there where the space and the earth hit, and where the space ends. His words will be the words of truth, and they will be hard and shake the human beings in their heads. And he will be restless in his activity, and he will be active when he is lying on the floor, and when he is walking around in the darkness of night, or in the strong light of the moon. And he will be active when he is traveling across the desert or climbing the mountains. And he will let himself be inspired by the powers of the stars, the sun, and the earth. He will put his mightful powers into his words like flowing streams, and will write them down as no proclaimer has done before him, so that they will remain recorded for all days. His words will be invigorating delight for the fair ones and full of love, and his words will also reach the unfair ones and jolt and shake them, and they will penetrate them like mightful streams, and gradually make them awake. His words will also immerse deep into space, and get through to the human beings there, and they will pervade the stars with their power. And his words will get there where the space and the earth hit together, and where the space finds its end. And his knowledge will be such that he knows the head consciousness, and the thoughts and feelings of the human beings, as well as their intellect and rationality, and he will know the body of the earth, the stars, and the space, because he will follow the paths that lead to the secrets in these worlds. 
In the time to come, the new proclaimer will be the third one to follow me, and therefore he will be able to heal, and will line up into my age-old lineage of Josiah, Elia, Enoch, Henoch and Nocodemian, the originators of the knowledge and wisdom, and who are not divided in their spirit who have the same spirit form, and in their head have never let their senses to become insensitive, as the human beings do in the present time, and will do so ever more immensely in the new time of the new proclaimer, where through they build up an artificial ununderstanding between cognition and knowledge, between lie and truth, between prediction and prophecy, between inspiration and inner view, between love and behaving in a sexually immoral and unseemly wise, between peace and war, between wisdom and imagination, and between delusion and reality. The new proclaimer will read many sacred books, and at constantly recurring times of loneliness, he will go into the mountains and forests and into the desert in order to learn and to dedicate himself to contemplation meditation. And he will join many cults, which worship godheads, angels, and saints, in order to fathom their secrets and erroneous teachings. And he will also fathom the secret regulations of the world and the time. And on the mountain of the horseshoe, he will build a place of restfulness, a place of contemplation, of love and peace, where all sacred and truthly streams will flow together, which have been running through the human beings since primeval times. This place will become an original and symbolic core for the earth and the space, because in this place, the powers of the spirit and the head consciousness flow together and will be building up an impressive accumulation of true knowledge, of true love, as well as of freedom, and of peace, and of harmony, and of wisdom. Thus, as they go along, the human beings will no longer take one step without discovering the traces of the true great proclaimer and to follow them. And Edward will be called guardian of the treasure, and he will be following me as the third generation after the proclaimers Emmanuel and Muhammad, who will be my followers in the first and second generation with the same spirit, yet with another head with the same spirit form, but with another personality, consciousness. The new proclaimer will be a powerful mediator and a recognizing one, and his word will include all cognition of life, because he will have opened himself to it. Many human beings will understand him, but all those who will hear his word with ununderstanding, or read his writing with ununderstanding, or only come in touch with it, will fall into an evil dread, as if an abyss would open in front of them. Thus, Many will anxiously turn away from it, and others will steal and falsify the word and teaching of the proclaimer in order to practice usury and gain great profit from it. They will be incapable to understand the proclaimer's word and will try to destroy it. However, they will not be able to make a sacrilege out of it, because the word and teaching of the proclaimer will be too mightful. More than twenty-two centuries will have passed after me when the new herald begins his work. By then, many villages and cities will be overflowing with great hordes of human beings, and an unimaginable teeming crowd will exist. Old villages and cities, and the walls around, the fortifications and arms, and the mortal remains of the old prophets, and of the human beings from earlier times will be buried under sand and ruins and they will be excavated in the new time as in a specialness and of old value. The days until then will have choked my voice and my words, as well as the words of the wise ones and of all prophets. And the human beings will go away from the truth, and will turn towards the belief of various cults with gods, angels, and saints, which in truth are neither, because they are only inventions of priests, and self-appointed salvation bringers. The belief of the cults will become law, and only a few human beings will dare to turn openly to the truth and the laws of the creation. Thus only a few will turn towards the words and the teaching of the new proclaimer and remain true. There will be a huge crowd of believers of all cults around the world, spreading themselves everywhere, and the human being's belief arisen in cults will echo from one end of the world to the other, 
like a tremendous clap of thunder. And the cults will fight each other in bloody battles until death and downfall, and barbarity will break out within the cults, and the high and highest priests and henchmen of the cults will persecute and murder the lower and lowest ones of the cults, appropriate their goods and gold, and become ever wealthier, which will also be through continuous exploitation, because tributes and penalties will be imposed on the believers by their cults, which they will have to pay in gold and coins. In the new time, the human being will have knowledge about the great continents on the earth, and about the great forests on the other side of the end of the endless oceans. And in all of the more than twice thousand years from the time in which I live, all the lands everywhere on the earth will become great kingdoms, and become empires, and huge mights when they unite. But as numerous as the links of an endless chain, as numerous will be the wars, and they will increasingly overlap each other, and thus mites will be overturned, but new ones will be built up out of them again. But the slaves and those in bondage, those who cultivate land and the wine growers, the herdsmen and herdswomen, and the poor, will attempt a rebellion, and more than a thousand times they will bring fire across the land. They will set castles, fortresses, and cities on fire, and will burn harvests. And they will continue to do so until they are taken prisoner, are tortured and burned and skinned alive, and the survivors will be forced to protect themselves again in their hideouts through concealment. And thus, the highest and the higher ones and their henchmen will feel again as if they were kings. But there will be progress, and when the time of more than two millennia has passed, the human being will have conquered the depths of the oceans and of the space, and he or she will fly into the space and search for a new home in it. Like a star is shining in the firmament, he or she will be like a star in the firmament himself or herself, when he or she has gained the sun's power and believes to be the creation itself, and when he, he has erected thousands of huge buildings and towers on the earth, has built powerful ships out of metal, and plows with them the waters of the oceans and the air and the space. And there will be new and big mites across the big ocean, and from one of them, new legions of barbaric hordes under the command of mightful ones, who have got very badly out of the control of the good human nature, will set out in order to carry out wars and conquer the world, and to get hold of the country's mineral resources. However, on the other side of the big ocean, the walls of cities and villages of the conquerors wanting to seize the might over the world will collapse, and the might will then only be destroyed, and be a scorched land, and only be muddy water. And the peoples of the earth will intermix, and it will arise there from a lot of terribleness, and a lot of illness, and a lot of infirmity and hatred, and terror and revenge, as well as many deaths. And when these days arrive, the human being will be approaching very difficult times and will be standing before an impenetrable labyrinth. Its entrance will be shrouded in a dark gloom, and the labyrinth will be black like the darkest night. And the human being will step into this labyrinth, where, like the evil, the red and glowing eyes of decadence will glow. And when these days arrive, may the human being of that far-off time be on his or her guard because the decadence will bear abominable anger, an oscurt at rage and destruction, and innumerable deaths in itself. And the days of decadence will be long, however, in the far future of the then coming time, everything will become clearer, and there will be love, peace, and freedom. So it shall be, because I see and hear in the space, and know that it will be such, because I am the proclaimer Jeremiah, and I speak the truth. Quetzal, this is the prediction of Jeremiah. It should not be necessary to say more for the human beings of the earth, because these predictions by Jeremiah and those by Enoch should be sufficient. Update of the existing translation, Marianne Ullinger, Switzerland.